Welcome back to my channel. I'm Liv Kenya and this is Hi dear. So we took a journey from Nairobi all the way to Cape Town late last year. The journey took 42 days and we covered around 13,000 kilometers. So guys, in my social media and also on, on YouTube, I asked you guys to ask me any questions about the trip and you guys sent loads and loads of questions. And the questions that were so highlighted were mostly the budget and many other questions. So by the end of this video, you should be able to know the things you need, all the information you need to know. If you are discovering my channel for the first time, we took a road trip from Nairobi. We went all the way to Tanzania. We passed through Zambia, Botswana, South Africa. We went to the kingdom in the skies, which is Lesotho. And then we went back to South Africa and used the Cape Town route to go to Namibia. We passed by Zambia again and we went to Malawi and returned back, back to Kenya. Those are nine countries. So you have a lot to watch. We have 26 episodes of, those, of the series and they are very, very interesting. You learn a lot and it will also entertain you. Africa is magical. That is what I can tell you for sure. Just go and watch them. It was a hit and that is why we are answering all these questions. These questions were so much. Uh, the, the followers, uh, from, the from the videos, I could, I could gather that the followers were they felt as if they were in the trip and you guys thank you so much for the support this series had massive massive support so let's go to the first question and idea will begin so your first question was what inspired the trip mm -hmm. first i would say the spirit of adventure we've always been adventurers and secondly if you've watched most of our videos we started our road trips we went to northern kenya we ventured out to uganda most of Western Uganda, we went to Rwanda, we went to Tanzania, all the way to Zanzibar. We even went around Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria. It is an entire series. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the same, we wanted to explore something different. And for us, South Africa became an easy target because most of us, Cape Town was, has always been our dream destination. And we couldn't think that we would do it by road. But then, since we've been executing this trip successfully, we thought, these road trips so we thought why not push ourselves more mm -hmm. and that's how we ended up doing the, the trip it was actually a dare yes. and then we just started doing the research and then we were like guys we have to go we have to go i mean what is the worst that could happen and as usual you always figure it out we and did. that is how the trip happened mm -hmm. we invited by the we invited you guys to join us i think some people thought it was a joke yeah, it's a big, it's a big day. Yes, because some people thought it was a joke, but we did it. Apologies for the dog barking. That is a neighbor's dog. I don't know why it can't keep quiet, <laughs> but how convenient. So, the main objective of the trip was to get to Cape Town using Garden Route. We had seen in so many documentaries the Cape Town and the Garden Route. It was spectacular, and we just had to get there. So that was the main objective. However, remember, because we chose the road trip, we knew we had eight other countries in between Kenya and Cape Town that we could explore. We are adventurers, we can't just pass through a country like that. We will do some little exploration here and there, even though we know that we did not conclusively or exclusively, what do we call it, exclusively? Yeah. Yes, explore this, the different sites in different countries, but we tried our best on the sites and many other things that were on the road. So we also wanted to see the natural wonders in these countries, the beaches, the gorges, the waterfalls like Victoria Falls. Oh my God, I could not miss. That is one of those things that was also on, in my bucket list. We wanted to experience different cultures to see how different their lifestyles of these different other uh, African countries were with the East African lifestyle the cultures and all that, we wanted to try out new food. That is why we kept going to buy food and trying it out, going to the supermarket to see what else they, what else is so different from what we have. Basically, we wanted to experience those other countries in between, in like, at, so that we can have like a rough idea of what those countries are about. So that is why, that is the second objective, to experience those other countries. Now the third one is just like usual, some of us have an 8 to 5 job, some of us are digital nomads, entrepreneurs and all that, so we wanted to escape that 
So we had to plan a trip. It could be a shorter trip or a longer trip, but that is why we do the road trips many of the many of the times. That is why we do the road trips. The next question is, do you feel you accomplished the objectives? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I think we outdid ourselves. Considering the, the distance, that was 13,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. We had 42 days mm -hmm. and we had limited resources. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we actually exceeded our expectations on this trip. And you are on a budget. Yes. Our initial time was... 35, 35 days, days yes. but we had to extend by seven days because of so many other issues that you will, you guys know if you watch the 26 episodes you know there are some so many other obstacles we had that made us exceed by around seven days but let me tell you guys it was worth every minute i agree how long did it take to plan the trip we came up with the trip idea in 2022 but we started getting serious with the research and preparing everything in the day when we posted the two road trips. That is Lake Victoria Circuit Road Trip and the Nairobi to Cape Town Road Trip. We remember we posted them at the same time. That is the time we started getting very serious on preparing the trip. So guys, it took us six months. It might sound like a very long time, but this is why. First of all, you have to do thorough research. Remember, our car is a Subaru Impreza and it has very low clearance. So we had to check on the roads that have good condition or the ones that our car could handle. We had to also check on the safety on the road, which routes were safe, that even if we could drive up to somehow a bit late, it would still feel safe. The second thing, we also were supposed to, fig to find out different sites on the road so that we just don't drive. We have a, whole, a wholesome experience on our road trips. We love road trips because of the wholesome experience. We also had to do a lot of research on different routes that we would, supposed to, we would have used. You can use so many routes to Cape Town. If you have watched many videos, you'll know that. And we also had a limited budget. We had a limited budget, limited time, uh, initially, we, we, were, we had planned for 35 days, but we later extended it by 7 days to make it 42 days. We also had to do a lot of research on different attraction sites along our road, the best accommodations we could, we could get uh, on our budget, and to ensure that we have a couple of options so that if we miss one, we can get another one. We also had to ensure that uh, we knew all the border requirements and procedures so that when we get there, we are just not shocked. We needed to have like a rough idea of up to 80% of the information so that 20% is bulletproof, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of research that goes into that. So, and remember, it is a very long distance for a very long time. So there is a lot we needed to do. So six months, I believe, is a good time. It's enough time. In fact, it's even the best. Yes. And then... We also were supposed to come up with an itinerary. An itinerary that covers all those things that I've talked about, accommodation, attraction sites, what is required on, uh, at the border, the different uh, fees that you're supposed to pay at each attraction site, and which ones were more accessible to us at what time, what time do they close, how far, how far is it from the main road, how many days would stay in each town. There is a whole thing that goes into itinerary and that is why guys you might want to buy our itinerary we are coming up with a website where we'll be posting all our iti our detailed remember detailed itineraries that we've been using and even with ex with a extra information that we found along the road and what we have seen on our itineraries we've just merged them into our different itineraries just go to our website i hope by the time i'm posting this video our website will be up but if it's not up yet, I can still send it to you, but at a small fee, just DM me or write an email and we'll be, we'll be able to communicate. Uh, on, and additional to that, we also do custom made itineraries. itineraries, yes. Just tell us the amount of time you mm -hmm. have, which countries you're interested in visiting and we'll create one. Or, or even you can just do some consultation at a small fee. Yes. So all this, we are charging that because in our videos we've given you a lot of information and 
the extra money we are charging is so that it can support us in the upcoming trips. You guys want to know more about many other countries that are in the world. There are so many countries, but many people want to travel and there is very little information. That is why we do the research, we go on the trips and we come up with itineraries. So support the channel by buying the itinerary. Yes. Whether it is the same one as you ours or customized one or or even consultation, the travel consultation. You can also join us in our trips. In our trips, we are doing right now. We have a couple of trips. It, most of them they are dry. Uh, they're called self-drive trips where you just come with your car. It's self-catering and self-driving. Um, so by self-catering, let me just say this, guys. I'm digressing a little, but let me just say this. Self-catering, self-driving means you'll be driving your own car. Self-catering means you'll be buying your own fuel, you'll basically be managing your own money. You see your pocket money, you're not giving us any money. You're not giving us your pocket money. If we give you a budget, it means that is the money that you'll be carrying with you that might help you uh, take you through the entire trip. It could be more, it could be less, depending on the, your taste. You could, maybe you have taste for luxurious things, you know. Maybe you want to go to this site and you don't want to go to this other one. It's just on you, but... On our trips, the self-drive trips, we charge you a certain fee. We call it facilitation fee. Facilitation is for the research and for making arrangements here and there on where people will stay, where they'll eat. But even if we arrange for places where you'll stay, whether it's camping or it's a bed and breakfast or Airbnb, remember you'll be paying it by yourself. Yes. You'll basically manage your own money. It's like you're just going with us. We're just sharing the itinerary and we're sharing our knowledge of the place. So facilitation fee is what we'll be charging. It's a small fee compared to, I think compared to the amount of service you're giving, it is a small fee. So you might want us to join us in that. Maybe in future we'll be also doing a, a like, is this a full package? Yes, a full trip? package trip. So we are, we are working on that, on becoming an actual travel Agency. agency, yes. We will announce those trips. We will announce those trips. Right now we have a name for the trip. For the, the company, it's Lyriad yes. Adventures. Yeah, Lyriad Adventures. So it is owned by the three of us. So for those who are asking, I hope I've answered that question. Now back to the same, same thing that we were talking about, about planning the trip. So uh, we developed uh, the budget based on what we had researched. And that is why we suggested a figure. Our initial figure was 150,000, but just stay tuned until the end, you'll find out how much, how much we spent. And we, so for us to come up with that one, you remember 150,000 is not little money, it's a lot of money. And that is the pocket money. But we need uh, equipment for the trip, both for recording, for camping, just for our own use. So we needed enough time, six months is a long time, or it's enough time for us to mobilize our resources here and there so that we can be able to buy this equipment. We can also get money for, for accommodation, food, and all those things on the trip, basically pocket money, and any other thing that we we'll, would we'll be using along the road. So that is why it took us six months. So the next question is, where did you gather information for your, for your trip? Mm -hmm. So basically, we used a lot of internet resources to gather information for our trip. We watch YouTube videos, like a lot of them. Actually, most people have not done the same trip, Kenya, Kenya to Cape Town trip and documented it on YouTube. But we got a few and also watched individual YouTube travel videos for independent countries that we are visiting on this, on this circuit. There was very limited information yes. on the entire trip. Mm -hmm. Actually, many people go on that road trip, but they hardly record. Yeah. or document or even if they document they just document the summaries but mm -hmm. we wanted details yes that's why we apart from the youtube videos we read blog posts some social media platforms they are like on x some people are leaving threads there mm -hmm. we could gather it and then what else so yeah some media so social media pages we had a lot of you guys by the way mm -hmm. You gave us a lot of information on the lives that we made. We made two lives. Uh, we used to name it preparation for the uh, Nairobi Cape Town trip. You gave us a lot of 
information. Very useful information. In fact, some of us, some of you even DM'd us on our social media platforms. Yes. Very, 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 very wide. Yes. You, some, of, so the, some of them just gave us a clue and then we went and researched further. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or if, on just some of these things, you, even Google, by the way, guys, the research went as far as Google, just as simple as Google. You go and find out all that information, maybe about a site, and just see the pictures or whatever and ask yourself, is it something you would be interested in? Yes, so yeah. those are those are some of those things that we places we found information. One thing we realized on this trip is that embassies can give you a lot of information. We realized it when we got to Namibia. Yeah, maybe, yes. When we met, we told you guys we, we met some officials from the Kenyan uh, consulate consulate in Namibia. We yeah. got a lot of information from them. We realized late, but you guys know that we've made this video please contact them. They'll give you a lot of information and it's just good to report that you're in the country so that just in case of anything... For your safety. Yeah, your safety and for easy stay in any of those countries. Yes. yes. So uh, also we found a lot of information from the locals and the hosts. Hosts of our accommodation hosts were giving us a lot of information. Even the locals that we met here and there, uh, South locals like the, just People we met on the road on the petrol station, Kefilo. Oh my god, thank you so much! Thank you so much. There's okay. no way I can mention Kefilo without saying thank you so much. Mm -hmm. He's like our family in South Africa, so he would give us a lot of information. And for that, guys, thank you so much for the information. And those who post the information out there, your life savers keep doing it. You're helping people around there, exactly, especially for routes that are rarely taken. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. One thing that you need to know is that as long as you're crossing borders and going to unfamiliar territories, do thorough research. Let nobody lie to you that they just woke up one day and they started doing a road trip, such a long trip like the one we had like from Kenya to, to South Africa. That is a lie. And it was just successful without hitches. That is a lie. And that is a way that you just compromise your own safety and your own life. So it is best that you do thorough research. In this research, myself, Hadia, and Patrick sat down for so many days to do this the trip so that we came up with this such an itinerary. And that is why we could even give a budget or even a time limit to our trip. But if you have unlimited time, I mean, you can do whatever, you can have enough time, but you at the same time, you still need to do research. So for those who are just leaving their countries, or even Kenya, and going to unfamiliar territories, just to tell you, to tell you the truth, you need to do thorough research. Don't just travel blindly. You might not want to know everything 100%, but just know you know at least 60% of the information. You just can't travel blindly. We are adventurers, but we also do a lot of research. We usually leave some percentage for us to be impressed or to be surprised. To be spontaneous. Or to be spontaneous, yes. but we do a lot of research. So the next question was, what were the requirements for the trip? Mm -hmm. Okay, for all travelers, you need a valid passport. You need a valid national ID for Kenyans. Just in case you go out there and, meet and lose your passport, mm -hmm. you would want something to go to the embassy with so that they can help you. So carry your national ID. Mm -hmm. Again, you also need a yellow fever certificate, a valid one. Sometimes they will disturb you if it's not stamped. Mm -hmm. So ensure your yellow fever certificate has a stamp. Mm -hmm. Again, you also need a COVID-19 certificate. This was not asked though, but just carry it just in case. Okay, for visa requirements, someone asked about visa. For, for Kenyans mm -hmm. and members of the Southern Africa Development Community, you do not need a visa to partake in this trip that we did. But if you are from other countries like Rwanda, Uganda, you might need to confirm with your embassy and see if you need to, actually I so with Rwanda, you need to, some countries you need to apply actually a month before you go there. Mm -hmm. So just check with the embassy to confirm about visa requirements for these countries. So for the drivers, you will need all the things that I've listed, mm -hmm. but then you will also need to carry your valid driver's license and carry a valid international driver's license. That one you can get from AA. AA is? AA is 
automotive association of kenya yes yes in kenya or whichever country you are in i believe every country has a, a automotive automotive a association they, they i think there is a way that they have a communication among themselves so they accept some things yes. and one thing she has forgotten the most important thing mm-hmm. valid passport yes no, oh, I, I did, I did. It was the first thing I said. <laughs> it was the first but, thing but I said. But passport and the national ID. Yes. Oh, okay. By the way, your national ID, as much as you'd say, why would I need a uh, national ID yet, yet I've carried the passport? Just imagine this. You've lost your... If Assuming by bad luck, God forbid, you lose your passport. Your national ID will be required probably at your embassy. Mm-hmm. Or even the police would require you to have that, and then you'll go to the embassy, and then from there you'll get help on how you'll get back home. So you need your national ID on top of your valid passport. Many Kenyans were asking if they would take a temporary passport for this particular trip. No, you do not. Need, the temporary passport does not work. You will need an actual passport. Now for the car requirements, leave. Yes, uh, the, car, the car requirements, I think I've mentioned it before in our previous trips around East Africa. First of all, you need to have an insurance. Initially, we'd go to each country and, and get an insurance at the border. Yeah. And it's usually, most of the time, it's third party insurance. Mm-hmm. But in this particular trip, the easiest way to maneuver the, the borders in matters insurance is to get a Comesa insurance remember the countries the the nine countries that we pass through are all commercial countries but there are countries like angola and mozambique where i don't i'm not sure whether the commercial insurance applies there but you might want to confirm with your embassies or any other in or even your insurer actually even your insurer so how do you get your your commercial insurance you go to your insurer, like me, I'm insured with a company in Kenya, so I just call my insurer, ask them that, I told them that I'm going to travel for this amount of time and the countries that I was passing through, and then I was given an, a commerce insurance. So I don't have to, to get a new insurance for each country that I was going to. I would just show it, the insurance. Some countries, they call it the yellow card. Yes. Yes. But they'll just ask you, where is your yellow card? That means the commercial insurance. It will save you a lot of money and a lot of time at the border. So other than the commercial insurance, you will require fire extinguisher. The last time we traveled, we carried a 1 kg mm-hmm. fire extinguisher. You will also require the safety triangle. You need two of them. Just in case of any accident or a mini accident, you just uh, put hazard on your car and then you put it uh, in front of the car and behind. What I realized is there are some people on the road who actually just have one triangle. That is very dangerous because the oncoming car might see it, but the car that is behind you might not see it. So there is that, there is that, it's just for your own safety. You'll also be required to have an extra tire. Let's talk about that. By extra tire, I don't mean the ones that usually come with the, with the cars. We call them donuts. Donuts. Yes. yes, in Kenya we call it donut. I don't mean that tiny one, that spare wheel. It is. It would be a good. Ad, uh, it would be a good idea to actually buy a brand new tire. That is exactly what we did. A brand new tire or a, car, a tire that is in a very good condition because accidents happen, and some roads that we used and were not so nice. So you can get maybe a, a flat tire or a mini accident or even tire bus. You know, there are some countries which are so hot and the tires, the pressure in the tire can just blow it off. So you need an extra tire. This is a long distance. The spare wheel, the tiny spare wheel will not, will not work. So you need an actual tire. If you can carry two, if you have enough space for two, even better. So the other thing, remember, your car, if, you, if it is your car, chances are you know how your car works, what was replaced recently, what was not replaced recently. Uh, the, when the last time you did service on your car, you changed your, the oil in your car. But still, this being a very long distance, imagine 13,000 kilometers and more. 
you need to do service locally before you leave maybe for up to 10000 i would say 10000 or 7000 and then when you get maybe to halfway somewhere like cape town or south Af- or just anywhere in south africa where you can ag- access the services you can do the second service but the service ensures that you are very safe as you are driving your car al- along a very busy uh, road you don't at times you, are, you just know the road is not so good but you don't know how horrible the roads can get or how good the roads are or which speeds you can take so accidents happen here and there mishaps happen here and there you might have the car might heat up carry extra carry if you always by the carry extra coolant that is what we realize on this trip road trip always carry extra coolant if possible carry some spares some car spares spare parts like if especially if you have subaru guess what <laughs> it's not very easy to get subaru parts in the southern african countries so it is best that you carry the filters oil filter air filter carry coolants carry oils for changing spark plug or any other thing that you usually change when you go for when you go for for services because finding these things in the southern african countries when you have a subaru car i'm talking about subaru car if you have a subaru just know finding a place to actually do the service or even uh finding the spares for the car is not easy on the southern african countries and even if you find a place where you can get the spares it's very expensive it's not as, as cheap as usually greeting can you can you just go to any any shell and just say i want to change uh, the oil and, and the filters and all that you get you'll get all those papers just in any shell but in the southern african countries it was quite challenging for us to do the service and the moment we did the, the service in lusaka it was quite expensive almost double mm-hmm. almost double the cost we usually do it even just changing oil and filters in kenya if you go to shell it's done free of charge by the way this is not sponsored yeah, it's free you just you just buy the the oil and filters and they just change for you it's free of charge free of charge in 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 lusaka it costs us an arm and a leg, and a leg. Yes. It, well, it was almost double the amount we usually spend and in south africa we had a hard time finding a place to do the service we were told later of a few stores here and there but i can't say for sure if that information was accurate so it is one of those things you it would be best that you you do research on and be warned carry your spare parts so uh just after servicing your car do some driving here and there to ensure that everything is in order before you leave the countries at least by the time you are leaving you have the confidence you know when you are as a driver if you do not have confidence in your car you will have a hard time you will have a hard time traveling for a very long distance she is forgetting one important thing first aid kit mm-hmm. you need a first aid kit and and sh- open it to ensure the supplies in there are enough mm-hmm. to cater for the number of people in your car yes in case of an accident yes that is very important because at times we just buy the first aid kit we don't even open it we never even get the paper out the wrapper out yes until the day when the, we, you actually have an accident is when now people are looking for the first aid kit and then we just realize even the medication inside is is expired yeah so no, some police actually make you open it mm-hmm. and if you cannot account for the extra people in your car how they will be catered for you mm-hmm. pay a hefty fine especially in Tanzania yes yes so just to be safe carry enough supplies yes on to oh, oh yeah i forgot one thing uh carry the logbook for the car carry the original logbook and a couple of copies and if the car is not yours ensure you get a sworn affidavit from the owner of the car and a car and a several copies you don't want going around the border looking for a place to photocopy your papers so a sworn affidavit i think would work for borrowed car or maybe hired car and if you have the money i repeat if you have the money you can get the carnet the passage on this particular road trip we had two cars and both cars did not get the connect the passage we did our research even before we did the research we inquired about how to get the connect the passage 
and the you are supposed to you are supposed to uh, put a bond mm-hmm. a bond or a security which equals to the value of your car if you have that money floating somewhere you can get the canet the passage of course there are some other fees that they put in there maybe for processing the canet and also for for inspecting the car there are extra fees on top of the value putting the insurance no it's called what security either to your bank or you can give a a the actual mm-hmm. cash or the bank can guarantee for can you. guarantee you if they have you have that amount in your bank account if you mm-hmm. don't have if you have that amount there's still the processing fee that is on top of the security you'll have the processing fee and then you'll also pay for the insurance for not for the inspection of the car by a specialist of theirs so after we did that research that did not make sense to us we tried to find other options by doing when we were doing the research we found out that Kenyans do not need necessarily need canet de passage in fact not even Kenyans when you're going to these particular countries that we went to the nine countries that we went to you don't need canet de passage it does not fasten any process it's just like having a logbook basically because when you are at the immigration and the customs offices they just follow the queue it's not like because you have canet bring your files we will process them faster you just follow the queue so if you have the money get the canet if you don't have the money or if you want to save on the on the extra expense just have your logbook or the the original logbook or the son of david because for us we did not get the canet de passage and we our processes at the border were mostly smooth yes yeah you asked us so many questions imagine the questions we've already answered and you still had many more questions so we'll just answer them quickly they are very interesting questions and those that will not answer in this particular video there's another video coming about um it's called culture shock for each country you might want to tune into that one because we'll be talking about very many things including those that we did not say in camera did you experience load shedding yes we did uh, but we experience it only in pretoria mm-hmm. yes we imagine the first day we got into south africa we went all the way to pretoria and then once after we had checked in, into our accommodation load shedding for 2 hours it was from 8 to 10, 10 yes. yes so it, and later we got to get the whole schedule of load shedding so the good thing about south africa they give a schedule of how the load shedding will happen so we got the load shedding schedule later from a friend so we planned ourselves within the load shedding even in fact on one of the days we were doing a live with you guys and you if you are in that live you'll notice that we had load sh- we experienced load shedding while on live so you might want to go and check out the the video the live so the only place we experienced load shedding was in pretoria but in those other towns we did not experience load shedding at all so the next question safety which countries felt unsafe i would say none of those countries yeah, were none. unsafe we were pretty safe throughout mm-hmm. even in zambia you notice we were driving at night yeah and we were safe we were told before we left we started this trip everyone was telling us do not drive at night in south africa i think it's because of the it's people are just caring for us and also there is this perception that south africa is not safe but let me tell you guys the entire time we were in south africa there was never a moment we felt unsafe but that does not mean we were not cautious of our environment we, we took all the precautions necessary we always looked over our shoulder we ensured we did not drive at night we made our arrangements very early so that we cannot uh, go to a place we do not know at night however we did not experience any and safe moments the entire time we were very safe so you might want to let i was just dismissing that whole and safe thing mm-hmm. now, i i think south africa is not any and safe than any other african country the robberies they say i think they also happen in in kenya yes it do just like any other cities robbery happens and also in all those cities you go to it depends with where you're going if you go to places that are and safe and a little bit more congested you will experience the insecurity 
But if you go to places that are safe, it will just be fine. That is why the research comes in. Ensure wherever you go is safe. If it is an unsafe place, ensure you have a local who will help you maneuver around. So that is all I can say. We never felt unsafe at any point. That is why we are going back to South Africa in November. Yes. We loved it that much. We, lo we loved South Africa. Now the next question, did you experience any mechanical breakdowns? Nothing major. The only, uh, is it really mechanical? I wouldn't say mechanical, but the only problem we had was that before we left Kenya, we had not refilled our air, air conditioning. Con so we had to refill in, we had to leave, refill in Lusaka. But now the only problem, we ran out of the, the gas again, the air conditioning gas, I was given a name, I've forgotten. We ran out of it because we had a leakage in one of the tubes that transmits the, the gas. Mm -hmm. So we had to replace that particular part. Getting that part was not easy because Subaru parts are not so much available in South Africa, but we eventually got it and we sorted our air conditioning problem. So that is the only mechanical problem we had. Otherwise, Pal performed perfectly. Pal, Pal is our car. She performed perfectly like the pretty girl she is. Yes. So the other question was, what are the immigration and border processes comparison between SADC and East African community. SADC is South African Development Community. Yes, the southern countries. So this is what I think, or this is these are facts. Mm -hmm. From our experience, let me just say, from our experience, these are facts. There are two things. The southern countries have very efficient processes at the border. You don't stay there more than you should. Everything else is very smooth. The only, pro the, the only problem we had, the only border we had a problem with was Tunduma in Zambia. There, be prepared to stay from six hours to a whole day when you go there. We've never heard of that in East Africa. But the other borders were quite efficient. Most of them could spend around an fact, hour maximum. In South Africa, we were in and out under 10 minutes. Yes. Even in Botswana, it was very fast. The, the, the entry point to Botswana was very fast. So I would say... Lesotho, we, even it was a drive-by. Actually, we did not have any clearance at Lesotho. So all I can say is, the clearance process in the Saudi country, the Southern African countries, was by far efficient than East African processes. I agree. And one of the reasons is also is because they do not allow clearing agents, apart from... Tunduma border in Zambia. They do not allow clearing agents. That means you can do the whole process on your own. It makes the work very easier. However, this is where East Africa is good at, is better. Crossing borders in East Africa, require, it, it, it does not require you to pay much. In fact, if you are traveling for just a week and you are crossing over to either Tanzania, you are crossing over to Rwanda, you are crossing over to Uganda, mm -hmm. you don't pay anything. But if you are crossing over for more and staying in those countries for more than seven days, you'll pay twenty dollars. Twenty You'll pay twenty dollars. But that is the only fee you'll pay. And just ensure from whichever country you come from, you have the Interpol search. That one it will help you a lot. But other than that, we do not have in East Africa. We do not have the toll fees. We do not have carbon tax. We do not have. Any charges we pay at any bridges or re for use of any roads. We do not have, it's called road safety funds. Mm -hmm. We do not have road safety funds. In fact, the, the road levy, I think the fuel, you, you, our version of road levy is fuel levy, which you pay when, whenever you buy fuel, it is inclusive of that. But we do not pay any other charges whenever you're traveling in East Africa. So crossing mm -hmm. borders, in East Africa is by far cheaper than the Southern African countries, which are the Sadiq. Because in some borders, we, in, in Sadiq, in this, in this trip, in the Sadiq countries, in some borders we paid up to 10,000. Just at the border, before you start paying the fees, the toll fees. The toll fees. Yes. Now, in Kenya particularly, unless you're using the expressway, you're not going to pay for toll, road tolls, unless they will be introduced much later. Yes, you never know. You never know. It might be introduced later, but at this point, mm. 
unless you're using the expressway, you do not pay any tolls. Yeah. Even and, in Uganda. And the they express, have an expressway I think the, I think, in Tebe. Yes. And I think the expressway rates are fair. Mm -hmm. Relatively fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, the next question, did you experience xenophobia? No, no. we did not experience no. that. No. We actually had a very nice We stay. had a small stay. South Africans are very kind. Both the all the races, the whites, the blacks, the colored, they have that that new introduction of another race, the blacks, the Asians. I would say the, uh, my interaction with South Africans, there was never a time I had a bad experience with South Africans. Mm -hmm. In reality, there's, there's never a time I had a bad experience or felt really discriminated. You know, at times, I say at times, it just depends with your mindset. Mm -hmm. But let me just not say, it. Let, let me not dismiss, dismiss other what other people experience, experience ours. because for us it was smooth. So if someone experienced that, I can't dismiss that because I was not there. But personally, I did not, like, our group will not experience that. We did not experience xenophobia. Imagine, before we took this trip, BBC had just released a video about xenophobia. So going to South Africa, we were so scared. And then once we got there, we were like, what were these people talking about? <laughs> but, you, but if you've experienced it, it's very unfortunate. However, we did not experience any, any kind of xenophobia. South Africans were very kind and nice to us. You guys saw in the videos. They were very helpful, very nice, very generous. And that is why I don't mind going back to South Africa. Which country did you enjoy the most? Hmm. Is there really a favorite? I don't think I have a favorite. I Let me say the only part I would... I would say I love each country for different reasons. Yeah. Yes, there is no, there's no like one particular country for everything. Like I love South Africa for the... The South Africa, both the modern structures, or rather infrastructure, and the natural South yes. Africa is very beautiful. It's not just beautiful, it's very, very in caps with your eyes this wide. Yes. It's, it's okay, Cape Town, Cape, Cape Town, Cape Town. When you're in Cape Town, it's like you're dreaming. Trust me, we, feel, we kept feeling like... In Kenya, we say, Kwani ni koinchingine. <laughs> we kept saying, Kwani ni koinchingine. If you've met me and you've asked me about uh, Cape Town, I usually tell you, I'm telling you that even in Chingine, in Chingine means that That's that is in a, it's another world. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I loved Cape Town for uh, South Africa for that. However, we, as compared, okay, the economy is, is better than Kenyans, but as compared to East Africa, their living standard is a bit more expensive for us. Yes. So that is the other side. The only thing that would discourage me on anything, but still I will go there and I'll return very soon. So uh, in I love Lesotho because it is the kingdom in the mountains. It has the untapped beauty. It has not been interfered with human activities like when you go there like you mean you guys you have this and you have done nothing about it and that is the beauty it everything remains natural you know zambia victoria falls oh my god it is indeed a wonder of the world mm -hmm. i i mean who can deny that it was just out of this i mean guys the, i don't have any particular favorite country let me just tell you the truth i do not have any particular favorite com country they're just different and beautiful on their own. What do you think I did? I, I share the same sentiments, actually. Uh -huh. Every country surprised me in a different way. Yeah. Cape Town, of course, it's just a wonder. You can stay there for a month and... You still won't want to live. Want, you still don't want to live. You go broke and you still want to remain there. Yes. Especially the broke part. The <laughs> sort of surprised me. It's mm -hmm. very dreamy. Mm -hmm. Malawi? Na Namibia, Swakopmund. Oh my God! I fell in love. By the way, we'll be going back to Namibia again fell this in year, love. in October. But that is our own trip. We won't, mm -hmm. we won't involve in. Uh, we won't uh, 
let me just say it will be our own trip you will see you will see it in the video but we are not taking people with us okay we will take you virtually we will take you virtually yes really not enjoy. physically mm-hmm. malawi did you see like malawi oh. there's just so much out there you can't you can't actually pick up favorite you can't you cannot because every country you love different things mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. and that is the beauty of Traveling. doing such a trip and that is africa we are unique that way most of you also asked why we didn't visit zimbabwe on this circuit uh, okay we had limited time as we said that we kept changing our route map four Up to times five t- it was it for five Four, four to five times yes because we were looking for a route that would be shorter and would maximize our experience for the for the 35 days that's mm-hmm. why we skipped on zimbabwe but we would really love to come back we we hear it's a rocky nation yes and if you know as well we, we love, love rocks, rocks. mwanza was our first love Ish, because, because of, of its rocks, rocks. Yeah. so zimbabwe we will come back but technically mm-hmm. we were in zimbabwe We, we we were there for a second yes to we, to we, look at the victoria, the victoria falls. falls yes mm-hmm. in fact uh, most of us you know we were, we were divided but most, most of us loved the zimbabwe side of the victoria falls others loved the zambia, zambia side. side so we were in zimbabwe we just did not explore it the way we should so we'll be back we will be back The next question which country do you prefer and would you relocate to South Africa and Cape Town in particular Like we said we do not have like a preference of one particular country but South Africa considering its uh its economic level or what we call it mm-hmm. considering its economic level of course it is higher economically as compared to Kenya so I would move to South Africa I would stay in Cape Town if I have the money or if I get a, a well paying job there I would definitely move to South Africa and Cape Town and if you can afford those fancy cars you saw by oh hey, my goodness oh South Africa why oh, you need money oh my god eh? <laughs> when you go there you will realize that the few coins you have in your account they are indeed few coins yes. people have money in South Africa especially Cape Town <laughs> mm. I would, if I want to if I would go back to South Africa mm. god please listen <laughs> I need to have a lot of money I need to experience that life to the fullest How are the roads uh, in Sadek as compared to EAC What do you think Roads I would say South African roads are better way way better than East African community yes But if I were to rank them I would say if I was to rank how do we rank the roads South Africa leads by the way the mm. uh, everyone says the best roads uh, in Africa is Namibia is Namibia from mm. what we saw I don't know when that I don't know when that rating was done because so many other countries have upgraded their roads and I would say South Africa has the from what we have seen South Africa has the best roads from what we saw mm-hmm. but maybe in other places the roads are not so good but from what we saw our experience South African roads are the best guess which country comes next Kenya yes i'm just saying east and southern countries mm-hmm. Kenya comes next we Kenya is somewhere there followed by Botswana yes. Tanzania Namibia You're putting Namibia after after Tanzania. Tanzania have good roads. Tanzania have really good roads, but they are very narrow. And in fact, they are labeled nicely. I think one 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 thing we lack in Kenya is, is the signage. signage. Yes, but we have very good roads as you will see yeah. in most of our videos. By the way, just we we've done a couple of videos in Kenya. Just go and check at how good our roads are. Mm-hmm. After coming back to Kenya, I've really appreciated our roads. We are doing just fine. Kenyans if you're watching this our roads are good you're doing fine just put yourself in the back it's your tax money <laughs> so the our roads eh Zambia and Malawi worst roads worst worst roads and then Uganda comes somewhere there but when I talk about Malawi there were some active constructions going on yes 
especially in Lilongwe, around Lilongwe there are new roads coming up. So maybe in the next two, three years we will have better roads. Oh, sorry. When you were ranking East Africa, we forgot Rwanda. Ah, Rwanda has good roads. Rwanda has good roads. Put even East, Eastern and Southern Africa puts Rwanda somewhere in the top three. For sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, I forgot about Rwanda. But the worst roads, the ones we've gone to, we've not gone to Burundi, but eh, I'm told the roads they are not so nice. Uganda is also stepping up. They are also doing some constructions here and there. So give it another five years, we'll review that list. Yes, objectively. Objectively. Next question, how did you get accommodations? So we got mostly on the normal websites, accommodation websites. Uh, there is just Google, by the way. You can just write, when you, ch you just go to Google and write accommodations near me. Mm -hmm. And turn your location on. And turn your location on, you'll get accommodation. It is as simple as that. Also, there are some websites like booking.com, Airbnb, Airbnb, mostly that. Also, there are some sites you guys recommended. Mm -hmm. the, the camping thing. What was the name of that site? Valanda. Valanda. Yes, I, you can go to Iovalanda. It can give you some insights. And hostel. Was it hostel? I don't remember that one. So those are some of the places you can get accommodation. So even if you'll have a long list of accommodations, this is what I learned. Always make the calls early enough if you're sure that you'll be there on that day or at a, at a particular time. If you just wait until when you get to that town is when now maybe you've gotten there at 8 p.m. and you're making calls. And maybe you do not even have access to internet. You yes. cannot buy SIM cards at night. Yes. You can In some countries so like ahead. Botswana. Actually, mm. we talk to locals who lead us to the right to uh, the camping accommodation the caravan park where we slept yes. the first day in Botswana. Yes. So also if you miss out on taking SIM cards and getting internet, you can talk to locals, they can recommend a place or two. Yes. But just to ensure you do the booking early enough. We had the options in other places we booked in advance, others we were just like whichever accommodation we get, we will just take it. But that is not a bad idea. Please don't follow what we do. Just not book in advance. <laughs> you know the problem with planning, you can be able, you, you might know you want to stay at a certain accommodation, but you get there late or maybe there are unforeseen circumstances that delay you along the way. And you don't sleep there. And you don't sleep there. Yeah. So you cannot actually risk losing your money booking a place when mm -hmm. you are not sure you know, you're going to make it there in time. Especially if you're on a budget. Yes. But if money is no problem, just book all those places book. in advance. Yeah. Don't be like us. We book a lot of last minute, but usually we have a list of places to book and links. Did Google Maps fail you? Never. For once in our trip, it, never it was us. very accurate. We were surprised. We were very much surprised. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the southern side have mapped their locations properly or what, but just use Google. You'll be fine. If you're going to those southern countries that you went to, Google is your friend. That is all I can say. <laughs> mm? Would you write a book about your travels? Actually, we've been approached by a couple of people so that they can write our story in books. We are really considering that. I think we've really not put much... We are really considering that, actually. We'll be writing a couple of articles in our websites, but a book sounds like a good idea. It's only that we've not had enough time to actually sit down and deliberate on that, but it is somewhere at the back of our mind. So if you've approached us and we are watching this video, just know it, we are considering it. We've not ignored that idea. Uh, what would you do different? I would not do anything different. With the amount of time we had, mm -hmm. I feel like we maximized the strip. Mm -hmm. If we had more time, probably we'd explore more of those countries. Yeah. But in future trips, we'll go independently to different countries and explore them extensively. Yeah. As we would like. It's only that this time we have more information and we are much more comfortable in these other countries. Yes. So probably we know, I think, for the first time, 
that trip just went well. It could it could we couldn't have had it any other way. Yeah, no. yeah we couldn't we really have had fun. We had fun and that was one of the objectives of the trip. So the next time we're returning there, we're just taking every single country at a time. We won't be in a rush. But then again, when do we ever have enough time? <laughs> You know, the problem with now our jobs is that we never really have enough time. You have limited time, but you just get... That brings us to another question. Someone was asking us, when, when will we do uh, YouTubing as a full-time job? This is what someone advised me, and I'm not taking it for granted. Never have only one source of income. <laughs> so, we might not have the 8 to 5 job, or, the, or any other jobs or businesses we are doing right now, but there's no moment, there's no time I'll ever tell you I'm only doing YouTube. I will always have many other jobs out there or many other businesses to run because it is not safe to only have one source of income. One day YouTube might just decide to crash. To crash, what will I do? <laughs> <laughs> the next question, how we handle laundry. <coughs> Remember we overpacked? Mm -hmm. We did overpack and at some point we had to send some of the extra baggage back home. However, our strategy was to book, maybe after every two weeks you book an accommodation that has a, a washing machine. Yeah. Then you do all your laundry there. We did ours in Port Elizabeth mm -hmm. and luckily she, the host had even a dryer. Yeah, so it so was very easy It was very us. easy. We just cleaned and dried them, even the shoes. Mm -hmm. So you we don't want to overpack. We, we did laundry only once. We did once. Yeah, we did in the entire six weeks, we did laundry only once. Uh, and I think that that was enough, but we had packed enough for us not to do laundry at, at all. all. However, it was a bad idea, given that we did not have space in our car. Yes. So... Perhaps the strategy would be pack lightly, but consider booking accommodations with washing machines. Especially in towns where you intend to stay for more than a day, book places where there is washing machine, so that it, it will make your work easier. But you can also engage locals to clean your things. Oh, perhaps and perhaps the washing machine is not an option. If you don't mind washing with your hands, by all means do it, but for me, I mind. <laughs> Like I said, I mind washing with my hands. I'm a baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> I washed enough when I was a kid. Right now, Next question. if I can, I don't. How we acquired SIM cards? Mm -hmm. So acquiring SIM cards for different countries was different. Maybe in Tanzania, mo most countries actually would get them at the border points. Mm -hmm. They are vendors who sell them. You just produce your passport and it's that simple. They register it, they load the bundles for you yeah but in some countries like namibia and we actually south have, africa and south africa uh you have to provide proof of address mm -hmm. and in namibia we actually drove for a long distance from uh, the border up to kitmanshu to get a uh, uh vendors don't sell the sim cards you have to go to the physical shop for the mobile network, network provider, provider. Mm -hmm. to get a sim card so besides the two countries the other countries were similar. You just get them at the border. Yeah, you just get them at the border. You pay. You pay for bundles. You pro produce your passport. They process it very fast. Now that brings us to the other question: If you have a temporary passport, it will not be easy for you to get a SIM card. If you have a temporary passport, by that I mean if you are traveling within East Africa, and you remember you come from one of the East African countries, you usually have a temporary passport. It won't be easy for you to register online using a temporary passport. So if you have a passport, you are good. You will have the SIM card. The booklet passport is what we mean? Yes. For East Africa, it's the blue one, light blue. Yeah. Compare cost of different... Cost of living, I believe that was cost of living of different countries. So since... Since we didn't transverse deeper into these countries, we will not be able to be objective about that. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about accommodation and food. food. Mm -hmm. So South Africa and Botswana are a little bit expensive, but they offer value. So you'll get value for your money. And I don't mind paying for 
value. So that is, to me, that is a balance. So uh, the next question, are there buses that can take you on the same trip? Yes, there are many buses, but most people, why, uh, what I've seen is that most people, if you're coming from Kenya, they go all the way to Dar es Salaam to pick that bus that will take them to Botswana, I think. Haberon. I think I think it will take them to Botswana or is it Zambia and then they pick another bus. Mm -hmm. You there's no one particular bus that just takes you straight. You'll have to do like at least two buses for you to get to Cape Town. So I cannot speak much about the bus because I've not taken it, but from what I have read, you might take two or three buses. But most of the time it begin the it starts its journey in Dar es Salaam. There's also an option of the rail yeah. that leaves twice a week from Tanzania though. Mm -hmm. That will take you all the way. Yeah. On specific twice a week. Twice a week. I Is think it Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday or yeah. Tuesday and Friday? One of those. Just confirm that. Do your research. The, it also has different classes, so you might want to know which class you'll book depending on your money. Or you could do the Robos Rail. You could do the Robos Rail. It's one so million. It's one million. Very for the beautiful. one million Kenyan shillings for the entire trip, but it's if I had money, I would do it. Why you did not camp all through? Yes, so many people are telling us we began the trip saying we're going to do a budget trip, we're going to do a lot of camping, we even bought the, the camping equip, equipment and gears. So that was, our, that was the initial plan. And then along the way, I think we started driving at night, especially when you're passing through Zambia. We started driving at night and getting camping site as opposed to getting, uh, what do you call it? Lodges. Lodges and bed and breakfast isn't so easy. Most of the time camping sites are not just next to the road, they are like some distance off the road. So I don't think it's, uh, we didn't think it's a safe idea to get to a town at around 11 p.m. and go looking for a, a camping, camping site. site. It's better we just get a lodge within the same area. So that is one of the reasons. The other reason, like I had told you initially, we had been advised uh, not to do camping in some countries. So we took that advice and trust me, the advice kept us safe, but having known some of these countries, we, uh, we just realized that it isn't unsafe really. It all depends on where you are going. And in future, I think we'll come some more. But remember this camping gear, we did not just buy it for as a one-time thing. We are using them even in our current trips. So it was no loss on our side because we are using it long term. That is why we ensured we got quality stuff. So that is all I can say. What do you think, Adi? Yeah. Also on that, you need to get to your campsites early. Setting up camp, yeah, inflating those mattresses, and then the next morning you need to again reassemble them, pack them back. Takes time. It takes time. And if you see our trip, we had a very tight schedule. We needed to be up early, leave early. Mm -hmm. That's why we really passed on the camping sites. Plus, if you, again, on that, some camping sites, they were charging the same charges as they, they would get for the lodges. Lodge. Yeah. So we skipped on the camping sites. The place we are so sure we are going to camp was Namibia, but we got free accommodation. So yes. we didn't need to camp. And I think we also got used to the luxury of staying in lodges. So setting, pitching up mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the tents, even though ours just is two minutes and the tent is done. But now there is the whole thing of inflating the ba the inflatable mattress. Most most of the time when you camp, you always want to cook. We did not want to cook because most of the time we were tired. We had even given out our cooking kitchen utensils. Kitchen. We, we donated because we did not have enough space. So we did not cook many times. So that I think that explains it. If you still have more questions, just put them somewhere on the comment section. We'll answer. Why did you not camp all through? No, I've answered that, that one. Uh, you why did you... That. Okay, that one I've already answered. Why you missed Zimbabwe? Each member's contribution. Each member, of, each member, the most active members in my group, 
are basically myself, Adia, and Patrick. Jen joined us in the trip, so she was like a guest, so she really didn't have to do anything, even though we gave her some tasks. She used to help us here and there, recording. She's our friend, so we ensured that she knew how to do some videography. Mm -hmm. Yes, how to capture some moments, how to take some pictures. She helped us in driving our equipment, well. our equipment driving. So she's our, she's our friend. She was an additional member. Because when we asked for people to come, she said she was willing. We have different roles. Usually, usually you guys see. Most of the time I'm the one talking. Adia right now is talking because this camera is facing her and there's nothing else she can do. I cannot run away. She cannot run away. <laughs> Otherwise, she doesn't like the camera that much. Mm -hmm. You guys will not even realize. Even Jen doesn't like the camera that much. That is why every time you turn the camera, you just find her very quiet or she's just looking at me like... <laughs> so they don't like the camera that much. That is why I speak most of the time. Because me, I don't mind the camera. Now, uh, Adia... She's our accountant. Patrick is our driver. He's our videographer. We all do videography, by the way. I do videography. When Patrick is driving, I do the videography. When he's driving, he does the videography. Adia is also doing some videography. You'll realize that at times she's recording all of us just to get different. The whole idea of videography is that you'll get different perspectives. And everyone's creativity is different. So whenever you see a combined, well-edited video, well-recorded video, just know it is our effort. It's our joint effort. Adia is a driver, but she's a coward driver. I am, but I'm still working. But we are not. We are not taking that. We are not. That is a joke. <laughs> she's, she has a driving license that she keeps renewing every month, every year, and she doesn't drive. She doesn't drive. Mm -hmm. She has to know how she has to drive. No, I did drive for some seconds. You saw, you also that. Okay, she, at least she drove in the I street. Did, I did drive. I did drive. I, I almost <laughs> say I did drive. I did drive for some seconds. Let me just tell you, there's an, someone who wrote a comment today and told me, tell her, dear, <laughs> that my two-year-old, my, my not two, nine my nine-year-old has said that her dear did not drive and she promised that she's going to drive. I did drive, baby. <laughs> I did drive a bit. <laughs> She almost killed us. I did in not. South Africa. I was the most, the slowest driver actually in South Africa. <laughs> I need to be given a medal for that. <laughs> she tried. She try. tried, but she needs to do better. Really. I will be better. Give okay. me time. <laughs> so I've just basically said what everyone does. The research is done by the three of us. We do a lot of research. The ideas come from all of us, and we also welcome ideas from you guys. So there is a lot of work behind the scenes. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, so don't just think that because every time you're seeing Patrick is driving, don't assume that Hadia does not drive, or Jen does not drive, or I do not drive. If he's, you see him driving, I'm the one recording, or Hadia is recording. If you see me driving, Hadia is doing the math, Patrick is recording, maybe he's doing a research, finding accommodation. So it is, we share a lot of things, a lot of tasks, but it's behind the scenes, so you won't know. Oh, I forgot. He he, he just the, said the mega editor and the editor. Now the, the the editor he does it like a hundred percent. That is Patrick. So, for the nice job that he's doing, drop that like there. Yes. Yes, like that and tell him something nice. He does uh, some very nice work. Yes. That is what I say. I don't know about you guys, but you guys like the video, so yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Um, what happened to the drone? Now, every time I was, I wanted to use the drone, uh, it kept uh, showing me an error that it cannot, uh, the GPS, yes, the GPS calibration has a problem, so I, re, I would calibrate every time, and I just got tired of calibrating every time, because it felt like it is an ending error, it felt like it is an ending error, and it used to consume a lot of time, so at some point I just said, we'll just... I'll find out why the error is so rampant and is so repetitive when I return home. So that is why I did not use the drone that much. I've been working on it and I believe it will be fine. Flying the drone in every country is very different. Especially if you have the GPS issue and the network issue, that means that you cannot, you cannot see. You know the drones, the, the drones nowadays, 
they can show you the restricted areas, the prohibited areas where you cannot, you cannot fly your drone. So I could not know if a place was okay to record or not. If you fly a drone somewhere close to a military barracks, is when you know you just can't take your drone up. In fact, action. if you see anyone flying their drone in the national park, unless it is the government's project, just know they are doing it illegally. The national parks, the military uh, barracks, the the uh, what do you call it? There are so many other places. If you've gone to drone classes, you'll know that. About uh, filming also, for us, because we are small time filmers, with tiny recorders cameras. with tiny cameras, we did not have any problem recording. The only thing that, the only challenge you could get, which is, I wouldn't call it a challenge, is that some people would say, I would not like to appear in the video. That is why there are some things we could just narrate, we could tell you we met someone, we, told, we talked about this and this and this, without putting the whole experience, recording the whole experience, or putting it, even if we recorded, did not put it in the video, because we respect people's privacy, and it is only fair for people to give you consent to, to record them. Especially if you're recording them directly like this, it's just best to ask for consent. Don't just be recording everyone and putting it out the internet, out there in the internet. It's not ethical, and we do not want to knock heads with people. We just want peace. The next question, what were some of the challenges with the police in different countries? We actually had the, the best experience. experience with police. Mm -hmm. They were friendly, and especially in, in is it Namibia? Namibia and South Africa, they would only stop you to remind you, like, in Namibia first, to turn on, to turn on your fog lights yeah. and check if you have all the right documentation, if you've paid for the road safety fund and all mm -hmm. that. Sometimes in South Africa, like, drive slowly, there are some wildlife on the road. Yeah. Or, like do you know this driver? You remember the, at that time when they thought that Patrick is trafficking us? Yes. <laughs> they were just confirming from us if, if we were safe. So they were very friendly. Even in Malawi, in Malawi they were so nice. Yes, Malawi, friendly people. Very friendly people. The warm people. part of Africa. Yes. Really kind people. Uh, Zambia, we had an encounter with the police. Not all of them, but we had an encounter with the police. They kept insisting that we are not supposed to drive at night. We have not confirmed that. That pass, we cannot drive past 10. We have not confirmed if that is true or not. If you have, please, and you are in Zambia, please let us know. But somehow, they wanted to extort money from us because they kept telling us we will pay, we pay them, we pay fine to the account numbers or give them exact cash. And as we know that government, uh, if you're paying any fine to the government, you pay to the bank. So they found us, you know we are Kenyans, and we've encountered corrupt policemen, so we know how to handle them. We did not give them any money. In fact, some of some of you guys were telling us, you told us the Zambian story, we did not finish the, the story. We slept in the car. We were stopped by the Zambian, Zambian police at one of the checkpoints. They told us that they wanted us to pay. We refused to pay the fine because we knew it is going to be taken to their pockets. They told us that we are not leaving. They'll take us to, to the next station. I don't know if to hear our case the next day or something. But they told us that our cars have been impounded. We told them that we want to park and pitch a tent somewhere next to their office. They refused. So they told us you just have if you have to sleep, you sleep in your cars. We slept in our cars. When it got to around four in the morning, four in the morning, four in the morning they released us. Because I think the next shift of policemen was okay. coming, and every time. Their friends, their, their friends, I think, from the other department, they kept asking them, why are you keeping these people here? Clearly, they were keeping us there illegally. So they were afraid that if the other shift of policemen came at four, they would be in trouble. So they released us. So that is the end of that story. <laughs> there was never really anything. The other challenge we got, like we said, is bad roads. You know, our car is not really an off-road car. So if we get bad roads, we strain a bit. Especially we had the strain we strained in Zambia and Malawi mostly, but we managed. 
We managed our car is fine. We did not have any problem. Uh, there's a part in our in the tires that just bulged a little, but it, it was not dangerous. We still that car is like a spare a spare that tire is like a spare tire in my car, so there's no problem because it was a new tire. Other than that, the other roads were very fine. Internet. Once you buy the SIM card, you'll get the internet. The best bundles, the best internet provider, the cheapest and the most efficient one was in Malawi. Yeah, it was in Malawi. Yes, you'd be surprised. We really love the internet in Malawi. As composed, to, as composed to those other modern, modern uh, and more developed countries we were in, Malawi, Airtel was cheapest. the best. Cheapest, good most packages, reliable. very reliable. That is our favorite. But otherwise, once you buy the SIM card, you'll always get the data. You just use your phone like you usual, usually do. Uh, driving at night was also a challenge because of the reasons I've told you about the problem with policemen in Zambia. And generally, driving at night is not safe. So it is something we are trying to work on not doing so often, unless we really have to. Yeah, but we, we drove at night a couple of times. But thank God we were safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank God we were safe because we were meeting our daily Targets. mileage target. Or uh, driving uh, with with foreign plates, it scared us a bit because you'd be so conspicuous. You can easily be picked on by anyone as a foreigner. So being a foreigner, of course, they know you don't know the procedures, you don't know the rules of the country. So you can easily be picked on. But... We are so happy that we did not have much problems having a foreign number. The only place we were asked questions because of a foreign number was in the South African country. They were in the South African town before Kepagul has, but it was we were not pulled. It's called pulled. Pulled over. We were not pulled over by the police for anything sinister. They were just confirming that we were fine. And someone is not trying to traffic us. By that someone, we mean Patrick, he was the driver. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not in bad faith. So yeah, Just a safety concern, which is yes. okay. Yes, if you have your, a foreign number plate, you are very conspicuous. Don't do anything wrong. But also be firm in your answers and your questions. Because people might want to take advantage of you, including the locals. Not necessarily the government officials, even the locals. One of you asked what we packed for this long trip. Mm-hmm. So we're going to break it down to 10 major categories. The first is pack weather appropriate clothes. Google has an, when you go to Google weather, you can see the weather of a region up to a month mm-hmm. in advance. So when you're doing your research and you know your particular dates that you're traveling, Look at the weather patterns, look at the temperatures, that will determine what you will carry. Mm. However, when it comes to South Africa, especially Cape Town, their weather patterns are a bit spontaneous. Mm. So carry warm stuff, maybe a jacket, a, a raincoat, or a warm jumpers. Actually, it says that you can experience the four seasons in With a day in, a in Cape Town. Yeah. That is why you realize in the entire time you were in Cape Town, we always carried something warm. You can just mm-hmm. be in some in your summer dress, but carry a sweater. You never know when you'll need it. Yes. Still on the matters on clothing, cultural appropriate clothes. Mm-hmm. There are some countries that are a bit conservative. We are talking about the ladies. Mm. You need to carry long dresses that cover up. You don't want to be walking around in a booty short. Booty short in, in Tanzania. Tanzania, you might actually get beaten for that. Even in Malawi, mm-hmm. I realize people are a bit uh, yeah, reserved. That's, that's true. Bit so reserved. at times, just being culturally appropriate, just find a way to what do you call it? Camouflage. Just mm-hmm. seek, just be like everyone else. It helps. Integrate with the culture that is around you. So again, with the research, mm-hmm. do your research. Okay. Uh, in th- the second thing that you need to pack is your. Let me see. Okay, your sanitation items. By sanitation, I mean you need your lotion, whichever, your cologne, some tissue, some soap, all those things that you use daily, toothbrush, toothpaste, all those things that you usually use daily, you need them, plus your sunscreen. Never forget to carry your sunscreen. 
I'm telling you, down there, in the southern countries, there are countries where, or regions, where there are three suns. You will need your sunscreen or else you'll come back home with three colors. Even if you're black. Someone told me that black people do not need sunscreen. No, we actually get burnt. Mm-hmm. I, I get burnt. You get burnt. Yes, and I do not want to expose myself to some weird uh, skin diseases. Yes, so you need those sanitary items. The next thing we packed was the camping gear. Mm-hmm. Again, when we started this trip, we told you that this is a budget. We want to try and minimize our cost as much as possible, mm-hmm. and we hope to camp a lot. So by camping gear, I mean you need to carry the tent, the inflatable mattress, you need to carry the sleeping bag, mm-hmm. the inflatable pillows, pillows mm-hmm. possible, and travel, and the, the whole neck pillows. Mm-hmm. Actually, there are, there are some inflatable neck pillows. And if you're carrying inflatable mattress, of course, you need the pump. You need the pump. <laughs> and please try and get the, the electric one. Yes, it's, it's easier to get the manual one and it's a bit... Yeah, it's a bit hectic, especially if you've driven the whole day and then you're like... It can be manual. Mm-hmm. It's good exercise, but who needs extra work when you've done a lot of work? Yes, and on motors camping, carry insect repellent. Most likely you're going to camp maybe near a river mm-hmm. and there'll be a, a lot of bugs. Mm-hmm. You'd want to prevent diseases yeah and also when you're camping if you'll be cooking you might need to carry some versatile cooking utensils there are some which are which can act as a plate Mm -hmm. a cooking pot and also a cup just go to those uh, those shops that that sell the camping gear and you'll see First we shopped at Decathlon. Decathlon. Yes. This by the this Mm -hmm. video is not sponsored by anyone so Mm -hmm. we're just telling you what we used so we shopped at Decathlon and we got very quality stuff. So you can also carry your travel utensils. Others, if you maybe like the travel cups, water bottle, water bottle, such things. Depending on the kind of things you like, a small flask it would come in handy. Yes, especially the if places you sleep hungry, you need to just boil water and take it with a snack and just yeah. sleep. Because at times you can get to a place when it's very late, or maybe all the shops are closed. Remember. Southern African countries close their shops very early. As early as, was it six? Se- six, seven. Five. Yes. Six. So you might want to have your uh, dinner early if you're buying, or you might just need to have some snacks in your car. And now that we've mentioned snacks, shopping. This is what we did. When we left Kenya, we did like the entire shopping, especially food. We carried food for like almost for two weeks, yes. two or three weeks. But we did not use all the food. At some point, we donated the, some of the food. But it was a lot. It created, it occupied a lot of space in our small car. Subaru Impreza. It has a small, yeah. a small boot. And we were four of us, so there, is, there wasn't much space. So what I can advise you is, do some little shopping, just to survive. And whichever country you, you cross to, do shopping there. So whenever you run out of shopping, just shop in whichever country you are in. If you carry everything, you might not have enough space. You might have some... If, but if you have a big car, even better. Some cars, nice. some cars have even, up, even fridges. So if you have enough space, you do so. But in some countries like in Botswana, you're not required, you cannot cross over to Botswana with fresh produce, whether it's vegetable or meats. So you'll be required to discard. forfeit. Yes, you'll be required to discard all those fresh produce. So for the dry items, depending on where you get them and how much space you have, mm-hmm. just think along those, those lines. So you need snacks. Snacks come a long way. They keep you busy. At times, they help you in saving money. You can't be eating all the meals. You remember, you're doing very little exercise. Yeah. So, okay, maybe, depending on your appetite, for us, we used to take two meals, mostly. Two meals a day. And it was always okay because we had some snacks here and there. And the snacks also helped on the days when we got to a town very late and we could not find a place to eat or we, did not, we didn't feel energetic enough to cook. Yes. So, okay, on cooking also, we forgot to mention, uh, you can carry, first you carry that, a jiko. We did. It's not safe to carry a gas. It's not safe to carry gas unless you have a car that has been designed that way. 
Yes. But you can carry the what do you call this fuel? This mechos that organic organic that fuel. Organic fuel. Yeah. I think that is a bit of uh, it's safe. Yes, it's safer. If you in Kenya we call it jikoko. We have yeah, jikoko. No, not jikoko. No, not jikoko. What was the name of that? Um there's a name you just use some liquid some liquid there's motor sour mm. but then the, there's the one we were really interested in I'm forgetting the name you forgotten the name we will show you so if you have it if the next time we buy it we'll show you if you if you can buy that one it's easier because using gas especially if your car is not like my your car is as small as mine and you do not have like a compartment where you can keep the gas safely you will have trouble with the policeman and you will also have trouble for, on yourself because if you go to Namibia, Namibia is very hot. Even the southern, the it's called, is it the southern part? No, the southern, the western part of of class of South Africa. Yes, of South Africa is very hot. It's hot. Clan Williams. Both Clan Williams. Yes, and and and, and yes, and Springbok. Even Botswana is very hot. Imagine you have gas and it's just exposed there, and it's very hot. It might blow up. It's not safe for you. But if your car has some storage space, by all means, carry it. Yes. Um, okay, the other thing that we carried, uh, we advise you to have is a navigation system. Yes. Or you could alternatively just use your phone for mapping. Yeah. You've seen a lot of people get lost if you do not have a, a map in place. Mm. So when you get, whenever you get into a country, buy the SIM cards, buy the data, mm -hmm. and then load your maps. Mm. If you are four of you, at least get a backup. Sometimes things happen with your phone. Okay. Try at least getting more than one type of line. Yes. One type of SIM card, like network provider, because some of them fail. Mm -hmm. Or you get to a place where one, one, one SIM card has network, the other one does not have. You can also carry the physical map just in case it will give you a perspective of where you are so those are some of the things we tried buying navigation system and it was quite expensive yeah, quite so expensive. we just said we we'll use our sim cards we we'll use we buy sim cards they're usually at the border just whether within the border or just the shops after the border yes the next thing to carry was medication someone actually asked why that, that they didn't notice us getting sick along the way. Mm -hmm. I would say it was luck on our side, but mm -hmm. still you need to carry medication. You need to carry painkillers, mm -hmm. you need to carry antibiotics, flu medication, antihistamines, for need, allergies. For allergies, mm -hmm. you need anti acids. You might need to take mal malaria prophylaxis before you leave. Mm -hmm. And again the most important thing, medication for food poisoning. This is about this is going to happen. Because remember, you are trying new foods, mm -hmm. you are not sure about their hygiene standards, mm -hmm. you do not know if they agree with you, and you are likely to get sick. Mm -hmm. So we carried loperamide and cetridazole, and that served us really well. We had a chemist. We had a, <laughs> a small pharmacy. <laughs> and it kept us safe. So yes, it kept us safe. You need to carry medication. Yes, on the same, someone asked, well, when someone was asking uh, why we got sick, mm -hmm. uh, we actually, we were not, it was not all smooth. You remember I had a mark here? I think that was as a result of flu. Mm. Yes, I had some sore here that kept, it left a mark here for a long time and everyone kept telling me, wipe your face. It was just <laughs> a mark. It was a sore that was healing because of flu. But thank God I, I just took the medication I had and I was fine. Patrick also had a toothache, but it needed extraction. So... And he had the best medical service, I must say. He keeps just reminding us of how nice his, the dentists in South Africa are. He had the best experience. <laughs> so on to the next so, working list item. Yes, you need to carry some music. Yes. You can be, even if you are traveling as friends, you, at times you just run out of your social battery and you just don't feel like talking. Really nice music, whether it is rock whether it's gospel, whether it's I'm a piano, whichever music you like, just download the music. Don't rely on YouTube because at times network can Will fail, fail you. you. So create a long playlist, a long, long playlist because yes. this is a long trip. Yes. Matters money. 
Yes, you need to carry your visa cards. Mm -hmm. On this trip, we carried visa and MasterCards, but we noticed that MasterCards did not work in some countries, mm -hmm. some ATMs. Yeah. So, but the most convenient one was the visa card. Mm. And before you travel, make sure you call your bank, notify them about the countries you're going to travel to and for how long you'll be away. Yeah. So that when they see transactions from different countries, they don't block your card of a, of a suspicion, suspicion of from... identity theft. Mm. So notify them so that they'll keep your card open. Also, in every country, ensure you get some cash. When you get to the border, ensure you have some cash. Uh, we've realized that, you know, in Kenya, we're just used to walking around with M mobile money. Mobile money. M mobile, yes, M-Pesa, mobile money. Wherever you are, you'll just pay with mobile money. In some countries, for you to register mobile money, you must, there is a whole process of registering mobile money. Some countries even do not use mobile money, so you might need to have cash. A couple of times, we almost got stranded for not having cash. Especially in petrol stations in Malawi. Yes. Yes. Especially in Malawi and Zambia. We almost got stranded for not having cash. Mm -hmm. So just ensure you have some cash for that country, the currency for that country. Whether it is the quachas or the rands or the pullers, they will save you a lot of money because if you carry maybe dollars, you will be required to do a lot of exchange and you'll be losing, your money will be losing value everywhere. Yes. And not everyone accepts dollars, by the way. Some people just want their country's currency. So at the border, get some, amount, some good amount. You can just estimate in this country, I'll spend maybe this amount. So maybe half of it will be cash, half of it will be card. You can decide that maybe for fuel, you'll be paying with the card. Or for accommodation, you'll be using Airbnb or any other website, so you'll be just paying it using your credit card or debit card, but ensure you have some cash with you. And you can exchange at the border once you, if you have anything extra, or if you, for some of us, the, most of the time we used to leave a few notes, and to those are our souvenirs. souvenirs. Yes, yes. yes. And on matters Zambia, M-Pesa Global is supposed to work there, but it gave us problems. So mm -hmm. Kenyans do not entirely rely on M-Pesa Global. Yes, on this, in this cash. particular road trip. Yes. Yes, withdraw some cash. Also, you need a few dollars because at, at, the, at some border, especially Malawi and Zambia, you are required to pay money in dollars. The and toll. Yes, the, the toll, toll fees. The toll fees. It's mostly $20. 20 Yeah, $20. Yes, and they insist on actual US dollars. Mm -hmm. So you might want to carry a few uh, dollar notes. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, lastly we needed the round socket plug. It's called Type D. Type D. Type D plug. Once you cross over to the Southern African countries. <laughs> okay, to us it looked very weird. We, we started having that problem when Botswana. Botswana. I think so. From Botswana. They're from Botswana. Botswana and South, and South Africa. How about Namibia? Yeah, in some places in Namibia yes. also. Yes, you might, you, you, you might, your, your phone and everything, especially if you're charging stuff, you can get stranded. Carry that and find it. We really struggle to find that type mm -hmm. D. If possible, we, find it at the border. Yeah. If you'll be crossing the border early enough, find them at the border so that you cannot get stranded on your way. Just once you have one adapter, for us we usually carry extension because we have so many things to charge and most of the time we are so many of us. Rwanda. Rwanda is also the same. Is it's the same? Yes, it's the same. They, they use those the type kind D. of plugs. Yeah, type D. Yes, yes. But Rwanda also had others that looked like they were very slim. They were just very different. Yes. Yes. So those are the things you need to pack. I hope this list will help you. Another question was on border processes and requirements. So let me just summarize in terms of countries. First of all, before she says that, mm -hmm. we had told you uh, the things that the travelers need, like the visa, uh, the, logbook. the logbook, and all that. And so on top it. of that, the, the border processes and the requirements are what she says. Okay, when it comes to Tanzania, South Africa, and Lesotho, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't need to pay anything per se. In Tanzania, maybe you can't when you're exiting the Kazingula border, the, the Tumbunga border. 
Yes. The Tunduma border, that's the only time we paid a council levy. But apart from that, you don't pay anything. In South Africa also, you don't pay anything. Mm -hmm. The only money you'll pay is the... Their national roads mm -hmm. have tolls. Mm -hmm. They have toll stations. And that amount varies depending on the road that you're using and the toll station that you're in. It doesn't have like a standard fee. Uh, when it comes to Lesotho, you will pay when you're entering it through the Maseru Bridge. Maseru Bridge has a fee that you'll pay. Mm -hmm. You literally just be paying for the bridge. For the bridge, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Zambia and Malawi are very similar. Uh, you'll pay the carbon tax depending on the CC of your car. You'll also pay the road toll. It's mostly $20. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you'll be required to have the actual USD. You, you, yeah, United States dollars. You, if you have cash, the better. Otherwise, you'll be given. You, uh, there are some brokers who can exchange for you. They'll rip you off with the exchange rate. <laughs> okay, the other thing that you need to pay for is the council levy. Yes, you'll pay the council levy in both countries. And once you have gotten, you have paid for the Interpol search in one of the countries, either Zambia or Malawi, you won't need to... Even if you, you can actually do the Interpol search in your own country. Being an international Interpol is international police. police yes. yes, because it is accepted internationally. Once you do the research, even back at home, wherever you are, the it will work wherever whichever country you go. But if you've not done the search uh, at home, once you get to Zambia or you get to Malawi, you'll be required to provide that certification from the Interpol that the car is traveling with permission if it's not yours or it's yours. It's not stolen. Um, what else? I think that is basically it. They are the ones which have the highest fees. Now, once you pay the toll fee at the, you pay the twenty dollars at the border. As you continue driving through the national roads, especially in Zambia, you will pay a couple more, up to even seven toll stations. Yes, up to even seven toll stations until you exit the country. Until you exit the country, yes. And but each. in Malawi, once you just pay once, you don't have to pay again. So to Botswana and Namibia, in Botswana also you will pay for the bridge and there's some additional charges for the National Road Safety Fund, similar with Namibia. Actually, the only payment you make in Namibia is the National Road Safety Fund, which yes. is a one-time payment. Mm -hmm. You're not going to pay for tolls anymore. Yeah. And then with Botswana, you pay for the bridge. You are using the Kazengula border, mm -hmm. and then you pay for the road permit. You pay for the National Road Safety Fund again, and then a motor vehicle insurance. Uh, I was just looking at this motor vehicle insurance, and I realized that even if you had the insurance, the Comesa, there's still an additional fee. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Uh, we, we. We wrote it on our. On our, is it on our budget mm -hmm. or on our expenditure ledger? Now, the, today is when I'm like, did you pay this again? <laughs> but clearly, you paid for it. paid for it. Yeah, we, 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 but we believe Botswana border office, they're not crafty, so it was seamless. In it fact, was seamless. It stayed there and, uh, Botswana, South, South Africa, Africa, and Lesotho. Fastest. Even Namibia. Yes. Even Namibia. They were very fast. They process everything very fast, very efficient. I, I just hope that all African borders are that seamless. Now to the bigger question that most of you have asked, what was the actual cost of the trip? You asked in so many platforms and I keep telling you, wait for the video, wait for the video. Yes. Drum rolls is finally here. <laughs> Our biggest expense was fuel. Remember, we covered between 13,000 and 15,000 kilometers, and our car consumes an average of 11 kilometers per liter. Mm -hmm. So the total cost that went towards fuel is 300,000 Kenya shillings. And on that, remember mm -hmm. the 13,000 was our estimate uh, kilometers, was the, the approximate kilometers on the main road. But we went, in, we went to the other rough roads, like even in Lesotho, we went to even to the, what do you call it? The dam. We went to the dam. We went to, so basically, on the main road we spent, we, it, we covered 13,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But when we add all those other distances, 
to different uh, sites, it comes to around 15,000. Yes. Yes. Accommodation. Our initial budget was that we would spend, so we would spend an average of 1,500 per person mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. But we exceeded that budget. We spent an average of 1,800 per person okay. per day. That is in Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. And remember some of these countries, accommodation differs depending on the type of traveler that you are. Mm -hmm. We, mostly in Tanzania, and, uh, Zambia and Malawi. And Zambia and Malawi got very cheap accommodation, mm -hmm. basic accommodation, comfortable as yeah. well. We mm -hmm. camped mostly in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But when you go down to South Africa, the cost of accommodation goes higher, especially in Cape Town. Ooh. Cape Town. <laughs> Cape Town and the Garden Route. <laughs> Fatten your budget for that. Uh -huh. Actually, if possible, save your money for that particular area, Cape Town, Cape Town. and Garden Road, because you're, you're going to spend a lot. You're not likely to get cheap accommodation as you would in Tanzania and other countries. Mm -hmm. So with accommodation, we exceeded our budget a bit by 300 Kenya shillings. Our initial budget was? 1,500 per day, per but day. we Master. spent around 1,800. Okay, remember these currencies are in Kenyan shillings, so you can do your exchange Basing on which country you are, whether in sterling pounds or in USD. Uh, our initial plan was to do a lot of camping, but everyone kept telling us, uh, do, do not camp, do not camp in some countries. So, because we, it was our first time going there, we took that advice that we did not camp. We did not camp in Botswana, we did not camp in, in South, South Africa. Africa. We only camped once. In Even in Lesotho, Cape we did not Africa. camp. In South Africa, we camped only once in Cape Agulhas, but now we know better. The next time we are going mm -hmm. to those countries, we are going to camp. We intended to camp in Namibia, but remember that, that girl, Galva, Bepua, gave was free accommodation. I mean, thank you again. Who says it's not? Who says no? Yes. Who says no to such an offer? Thank you again. Yes. Now, when you go to the next category, food. Mm -hmm. We had estimated to spend an average of a thousand shillings per person per day, mm -hmm. but we ended sp ended up spending one thousand five hundred Kenya shillings per person per day. Mm -hmm. Now we can explain that Tanzanians' food is cheap, very cheap. But when you go down to the south, mm -hmm. most of the accommodations don't offer bed and breakfast. Remember, in Tanzania, you get a very big portion of breakfast. Eight. An actual meal for breakfast. Now you would skip breakfast. But in the other countries, we had to buy breakfast. Mm -hmm. That's even, why even in Malawi, our expenses went high. Yeah, mm -hmm. Malawi, Malawi are, are very generous as well with breakfast. Mm -hmm. So that's why our expenses went up a little. By? By 500 shillings per yes. day. We're, per supposed, per day. we're supposed to spend 1,000 Kenyan shillings per day, but 1,500. Mm -hmm. And remember, we used to eat, to eat uh, in fast foods, mostly, in the mostly. southern countries. We ate a few times, uh, we, we had street foods just a few times and we love South African street foods but at, mm -hmm. they are in the, there are some places where you cannot get street food. Yes. So you end up just by going to the, is it called? The Lion? La, la? It's called Lion what? Lion? I've forgotten Lion something. Oh, the supermarket. Hunger. Hunger. There's a name. There is Nando's. Uh, mm -hmm. There is what do you call it? Is it Galitos? There are those supermarkets we went to find food. Oh yeah. By the way, what was the name? Pick and Pick and Pay. Of Checkers. Yes, Checkers and Pick and yeah. Pay. They they have cheaper food as compared to those other. Restaurants. Uh, they're called chain mm -hmm. chain restaurants, but there are places where you could not. You, maybe when you go for lunch, after. After afternoon, it's, if you go past 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 twelve Two. p.m. Yeah, twelve. Twelve. Uh, actually, twelve. You'll find twelve. You'll food. find ready food. But if you go from one thirty and beyond in those in checkers and pick, uh, pick and pay, you won't find food. So you'll be forced to go and get food from Nando's, and you know those portions are very small. So you might end up to buy snacks to supplement that. That is how we we spent even extra. So this money is the the 1500 is not necessarily for just the main meals breakfast and dinner that we used to take but it also includes the snacks we used to buy 
and the street foods maybe when you get fish somewhere we feel like snacking on fish we get some fruits somewhere water and the fancy drinks water oh and the fancy drinks we were trying the sodas in, in south africa oh my god if there's something i miss fruit and those oh fruit canna my favorite fruit drink canna. fruit canna and those spatel it's called spatel spaletta spaletta drinks I can't wait to go back to the southern countries to I, take that. I know. There those drinks are expensive but I will take them again. Pineapple, especially pineapple. Now, uh the next thing would be tips, guides, entrance fees or generally activities that we did. Mm-hmm. Let's generalize that. We spent between 20,000 to 25,000 Kenya shillings per person for the entire trip. Mhm. That amount would vary depending on what you want to do. Remember yeah. we mentioned in Zambia there are a lot of activities you could do mm-hmm. on Victoria Falls and that would attract different charges. Yeah. Now if you're interested in trying out different activities you can go yeah. to our website. Mm-hmm. We list those activities plus the charges. Mhm. On the, in details in details on yes. the itinerary. On the itinerary. Yeah. If by the time I post in this video our website will not be up, you can just send me a mail. and then I'll organize for you to get the detailed itinerary even for the activities in Cape Town activities in Zambia activities in Botswana the distances and the kind of accommodation you might want to get it's in our itinerary so if you want details like the fine details you can just buy our itinerary or download it on our website if it is up by the time this video is up Okay now to the last category border charges and tolls. Mm-hmm. As we mentioned earlier about the different countries and what charges you would pay for mm-hmm. whether it's carbon tax, toll fees, mm-hmm. levy, council levies, we spent a total of 30,000 mm-hmm. for those countries. Mm-hmm. 30,000 Kenya shillings on all those countries. Yeah. So uh one thing you need to know the prices here There are those that we give you per day and others for the entire trip but remember our est- the day our budgeted days were 35,000 35 days mm-hmm. but we ended up spending 42 days on the road so on top of our budget we had an extra 7 days that we had to we had to cater for or mm-hmm. to add to add additional money to our initial budget which was between 150,000 to 200,000 Kenyan, Kenyan shillings. shillings yes so in total we end up spending in total we, st- we ended up spending uh, a 250,000 Ken- Kenyan, Kenyan shillings, shillings per person yes so that 50,000 extra was as a result of the seven extra days we stayed on the road otherwise if we had kept time and we spent 30 35 we 30- 35 days. 35 days on the road trip we could be within our budget of a maximum of 200,000 Kenyan shillings so the 50,000 was for the extra 7 days yeah yes so basically all i can say is that budget for 42 days it was within our budget for 35 for 35, for 35 days it was within our budget for 42 days it is a very fair trip if you research and find, try to finding just do your research go to the google or go to any social media platform and try to find the traveling agencies especially in Kenya the ones that go to Cape Town the ones that go to Cape Town or even Johannesburg mm-hmm. and just even try just by air four nights five days inclusive of the travel dates they can charge they charge you up to 250000 Kenyan shillings and that is exclusive of air flight. Yes, you pay for yourself the, the you pay you, you go you still dip your pot your hands deeper to pay for your flight charges. So imagine what other people spend for 5 days and 4 nights we spent it for 42 days. Totally worth it, I'm it, saying. Yes, it's value for money. Thara thara value for money. There are other I think I've seen other agencies they take you the ones that take you by road they take how many days? 21 is it 14 or 21 days i think 21 days but normally they don't go to south africa it's normally to botswana maybe namibia okay zambia zimbabwe malawi and and, 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 and others they just give you one way trip and then you return with the flight the flightings yes 
and those those days and you know even most of the time we don't even go to visit those sites yeah it's normal you usually very tight actually there's someone who posted i'm not going to mention the company but someone was posting a similar road trip and i was watching it and i was like <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not using that i'm not using that uh, that particular travel agency because they were literally being just taken to cape town is it cape town in johannesburg Okay. They just say South Africa. They just they were just being taken to South Africa. No activities. It did not make sense to me. So you're basically looking at the roads. But, so for people, for the experience we had, totally worth every worth coin. Worth it. You're saying people? I was saying there are different type of travelers. Some people just want to to move through some territories just to get there. I don't know. Us, we are adventurers. We would like to explore. So basically, they just want stamps on there. Yeah, you just want to pass through, get stamps, stamps pass on through. your passport. Pass through. Anyways, it's good. Yeah. Do each their own. Yeah, yes. everyone gets enjoyment in a different way. Yes, there are people who like luxury. They just want to land, stay in a in a luxury hotel the soak, entire time, soak in a bathtub for five and days. So depending on what kind of traveler you are, you know which budget best suits you. But if you like the kind of travel that we do. Uh, in December, not in December, in uh, November, we are going back to South Africa. This time, we are doing a self-drive. However, we won't do it the same way we did on this road trip. We will be flying into South Africa. Okay, let me just say, in November, we are going back to South Africa to do a self-drive trip. It will be very different from this one, but we will be covering more countries. We will be covering Eswatini, we will be covering Mozambique, and uh, more Cape Town and another side of garden route so if you'd like to join us please let us know you can send uh, your details we are working on the itinerary we are working on the budget so we'll be giving you details very soon please let us know we'll also be posting it in our social media platforms we'll also be posting it in our on our website to give you more information so you guys stay tuned we have another trip and please this time join us yes. and as you know ours is usually adventurous we do a lot of research and we, mm -hmm. we are very authentic. We, what you see is what you get. The question that you guys asked was, can any car do the trip? Our answer is yes. Have you guys looked at PAL? Have you, ever, have you seen that car properly? It has seriously low coverage. And we did the trip just fine. So even if you have a small car like this, I believe you can... You can take the, the journey. You can do the road trip, really. I cannot tell you that you're limited by your car. And one of the reasons we travel, we do road trips with our car, is just to remind everyone that at times you don't have to wait when you, for when you have a lot of money or you have very big cars to travel. Just use whatever you have. Because this life waits for no one. You are not guaranteed tomorrow. So Indeed. use whatever you have to live your life to the fullest. Have a balance in life. Play hard, work hard. That is our motto. If you find us hustling out here, we work hard. But when we are on the road, we also play hard. Our future plans, that is... Someone asked, will you be embarking on similar or bigger projects in future? Yes, I believe so. We have a couple of places to go. Many of you have suggested that we could go to the north or all the way to Cairo, that is a very good idea. We are actually considering it. And we can cover all that distance. We are still doing our research. And also, we are launching our website. It's Live Kenya. We'll give you the exact URL, link rather. We'll give you the exact link so that you can go there and find anything or any information you need from us. We'll be posting there our itineraries, any road trips that we go to, any customers itineraries, uh, any tips that you need to have maybe when you're going to Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, all those things will be, will post it there. So you just go to our website, you go to the shop and you check for the itinerary. You download it at a small fee 
and you get all the information. You guys know we are very detailed. If you've been watching our videos, you know we are very detailed. So I assure you guys will not be disappointed. And the money for the website and maintenance and all that, the money we'll be collecting from the itineraries, we'll also be putting up some merchandise. You guys will just check on our website. Once it's ready, we'll let you know so that you can go and check on the website. The money we'll get from the website, we intend to use it for more travels because you guys keep asking us, how do you get the money to travel? This is one of the ways we travel. Mm -hmm. We also have some people who are, who are members of our YouTube, of our YouTube channel. They, they pay the monthly. Premium. Yes, they pay premium for monthly, uh, man, subscription. Man, monthly subscription. We get money there. And this website is going to be the other one. As you guys watch our videos, you also get money from there. You also get donations. Some yes. of you have been so kind enough. You to guys send also some donate money. a lot of money. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is also our another project. So it is also going to support us. We intend to travel more. There are so many countries we haven't seen. Even Kenya only, we've not exhausted. We've not Kenya exhausted. We not. That is why. That is why we have so many trips, local trips we have planned. They are mostly self-drive. In the future, we intend to do the full board kind of trip. But right now, we are doing self-drive. Like I explained, in the self-drive, when we've posted all the trips that we have uh, planned. In fact, we've already gone for one, Mount Kenya. Circuit. Circuit, we have we already done with that. But... We might repeat it if you guys want, and the numbers are okay. We will, we might actually repeat the same trip. Actually, in any of our trips, if you want it organized, you can just tell us. As long as it makes financial sense, we'll take it. So we are doing the Mount, Kilima Mount Kilimanjaro circuit in May. Mm -hmm. Then we'll do another local one. We're still investigating, no, researching, not investigating. Yes. We are doing the West Pokot Baringo, Baringo circuit. Mm -hmm. And then there are other trips. There is another trip we'll do in South Africa. Yeah. If you want to join us, we'll be doing the western side yeah. of South Africa and Mozambique and Eswatini. Eswatini. Yes, we are excited about Eswatini. And then we'll have another trip outside of the country, but we'll be doing that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We'll also be going back to Namibia. Mm -hmm. We'll do that by ourselves, but we'll take you as always virtually. Yes. So be everything you'll be seeing, you'll also be seeing. Yes. <laughs> so guys, we have so many plans for this year. This is our year to grow again. And we, I love the fact that we keep growing, we keep coming up with new things. You guys uh, challenge us and we take up the challenge. And, and encourage us and support us and pray for us and we are thankful for that. Yes. And guys, this is what you need to know. If we set a date for any trip, even if only one person will show up, we will go. We will take you there. We will go. Because we would like you guys to have the experience we have. We would really like you to have the experience we have. We share most of the information on our videos. But remember, we will also be doing more detailed information we will be pro providing on the itineraries and on the trips. So if you are interested in that, yes, you should be in our group. I, I believe we've answered all the questions. We have. If you have more questions, you can post them on the community. We will take time, we'll respond to each one mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. as best as we could. Okay, oh, one thing I forgot. Mm -hmm. Under Lyriad, we, under our website, we'll also be offering travel consultancy. Yes, at a small fee. So you'll just, if you have any questions or you want uh, any clarifications that we have not already posted out there, you can go to the We are going to tell you more in the Culture Shock video. By the way, I'm excited about the Culture Shock. You guys, there are so many things that happen behind the scenes that we do not tell you. And usually we reveal them in the Culture Shock culture videos shock. <laughs> on the nine countries. Yeah. Yes. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching this far. Mm -hmm. I hope we've answered all, all of your questions. Mm -hmm. I hope you're satisfied. I hope you're ready to pack those bags and go on the street because it will be worth it. Mm -hmm. We came back with a lot of insight, insight and a lot of life lessons. Yeah. 
and if you've not watched yeah. any of the 26 episodes go and watch them we'll be making a full documentary for to cover all the 26 episodes we'll find a way to combine it and maybe summarize it those who cannot watch single videos can just go and watch that one particular video and get most of the information as we usually do so look out for full documentary and the other episodes that you've not watched thank you so much for the support on this trip so until the next video when we'll be discussing about the culture shocks in the nine countries bye bye